So he was out here on his uh, stroller, or his uh, wheelie thing, <laughs> during the presentation. At least he was part of it. Uh, it can't be fun to be uh, ending the season on the sidelines, but that's the way it is for Aaron Mulama. So we are underway here tonight. Cool evening, but it's uh, not raining and foggy like it was last night where we had trouble seeing across the field. And it was a pretty pretty even game last night, although I'd say UBCO probably had the edge in play last night, Oliver, but not where it mattered most. Yes, yes, yes. Yesterday was a, it must have been a frustrating game for the, the Heat as they did everything but score. And the one person that scored was June Wong Choi of the Cascades during a little bit of a fumble there in the, in the box yesterday. Yeah, Sam McDonald, one of those graduating players for the Heat, playing his final game tonight. He uh, went out to head the ball and he lost. I don't know if he lost where it was, maybe, or if it just skidded off the back of his head. Anyway, it went behind him, and Nicholas Reitzma, the keeper, was coming out to try and grab it as well. And it left a wide-open net. They say for a lot of goalies, a wet, bouncy ball is a nightmare. Absolutely it is. And it was last night. So we'll go through the many ways in which the Cascades can make or miss the playoffs tonight. It's uh, There's still many, many possibilities out there as there are a bunch of teams still playing and all within a couple points of each other. So there's many varieties that the North, or pardon me, the West Division could finish. But the one thing that is certain is the Heat will not be higher than fourth, which is required to punch a postseason ticket this year in this shortened season, which uh, is only 12 games due to the pandemic, and it was only division play this year. These teams did not travel outside of British Columbia to play their games, whereas they'd normally visit Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. So hopefully we'll be back to that next year. Although you never know with this thing. <laughs> and here come the Heat. Giuliano Mantegliani trying to get in there, but the ball was behind him. And the... Cascades will slow it down, take a look around, and they'll send it back to keeper Jackson Kelks, who got the shutout last night. He decides to send it all the way across the halfway line. But it goes out. There's a long ball. Can't be contained by Jacob York. And Choi will look around. Toss it deep. Sam McDonald, another one of the graduating players. He's going to be missed next year in that center back position. And... And on corner kicks, <laughs> where he scored many of his seven goals in his career. A lot of goals for a center back, but it shows how versatile he could be during his time with the Heat. And they are definitely going to miss him. Scored a goal this season as well, on October 16th against Victoria. That's right. He chipped in a free kick from Aiden Tuck. Not a corner, but a similar type play where it was a set piece and he's often in the right place at the right time and he was again last weekend in that win over Victoria that kept the team's playoff hopes alive. But those hopes could not be extended. Here come the Cascades, Taylor. Richardson could not get too much oomph on that shot. Oh, 
So just to check the standings here, going into today, going into today's action, we had UBC in second place with Trinity Western at 15 points. UBC had one game left. That was tonight. It is tonight. It's being played against the number one team in the West Division, Victoria, which is going to finish first no matter what. And then Trinity Western, they had 15 points as well, but their season ended last weekend. So they are uh, helplessly watching tonight. Thompson Rivers and Fraser Valley are currently tied for fourth. Although I will have to check the Thompson River score because that game is over. So pardon me for a second while I check that. It'll be interesting to see uh, how the 4-4-2 formation works for the Heat today. You're going to be seeing a lot of, uh, suppose they're anticipating action from Tega Jumabone and Jacob York. And I'm sure that the Cascade will try their best to split those two apart to avoid making any serious plays. And yes, it looks like Thompson Rivers got the victory today. So they have moved past everybody. They're now in second place all alone. With 18 points. Pardon me, 17 points. Although UBC is currently enjoying a comfortable lead on the Victoria Vikes, who are apparently resting a bunch of players today as they prepare for the playoffs. So that would mean that UBC would also jump up and get to 18 points, which would be one ahead of Thompson Rivers. But Thompson Rivers has their final game tomorrow. There's so many options, so many possibilities out there for the Cascades. And that's why a win would be the best way out of this. Uh, <laughs> exactly. They definitely need. They definitely need points now because. A tie will not do them any good because they would lose the tiebreaker against Trinity Western. If they were, if Fraser Valley were to get only a point tonight against the Heat, now that it looks like UBC is going to go on to beat Victoria tonight with a three goal lead, and Thompson River is already having one. Fraser Valley cannot afford to tie Trinity Western because Trinity Western has the tiebreaker based on their season series. They beat UFV 3-0, and they tied the other game. So Trinity Western has the edge there. So it's really looking like Fraser Valley has one option here, and that's to win. they want to get to the playoffs. <laughs> Sam McDonald. Over to Felix Jones. And Felix Jones is going to just send it back to Reitzma. Jimmy Steele, another graduating player. Gives it to McDonald. McDonald's going to play it over for Riley Marshall. Malachi Emerson and Giuliani Montagliani. Here's Giuliano Montagliani with speed. He goes down trying to get around the defender. Felix Jones plays it off his chest. And the UBC O'Heat are going to regroup here. Take a Juma bone. He was greeted physically there, and the whistle goes. And the Juma Bone lost his ankle protector or something, an ankle support of some kind. 
on that collision and uh, the Heat are going to have an opportunity here, Oliver. This is what they want. They, they want to look for offensive opportunities as quickly as possible. Only this time, unlike yesterday, they do want to add something to the score sheet. Aiden Tuck and Taylor Pichet are standing there beside the ball. Everybody else assembles near the top of the box. And it'll be Tuck. Drives it, but that one went way off the top of his foot and well over the net. When one kicks the ball, the back leg that's about to kick, that can determine how far you go. And if it's very high up, it's going too far, and that's what we just saw there. Richardson forces the pressure there, forces that errant kick, and Nikhil Reddy, the former Heat player who, I guess technically, could be playing his final game of his U-Sports career tonight. Don't forget that this could be the last game for the Cascades as well, if they can't find a way to win this game. So the desperation... So the guys in white with the green stripes is uh, probably going to be a little greater than the boys in blue, but playing the role of spoiler is always something. And <laughs> there was a great opportunity. It went through the box. And a couple of people had a chance at it, but nobody got their foot on it. No, no, not this time. And going back to your last statement, if the Heat have a statement to the Cascades, let's go home together. Yeah. <laughs> That is true. It was definitely a chippy game last night. Several yellow cards and, uh, you know, some chatting and some physical play, of course. And uh, both teams desperately wanted it. Both teams needed a sweep to guarantee themselves a playoff berth. And uh, the intensity definitely was there last night. So even though the Heat don't technically have anything to play for, they have uh, seniors who want to go out on a winning note. And, uh, and yes, they can ruin the party for the Cascades, who ruined the party for them last night. And going back to the yellow card statement, I'm sure Tom Lowndes is telling his guys right now, think about the playoffs. If we're going to be there, I don't want to see some of you missing the next match. That is true as well, as an accumulation can lead to missing time, am I correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Pichet sends it up. Malachi Emerson's going to send it ahead for Jacob York, but the flag goes up. And offside is the call. And Jackson Kelks decides he's going to send that one deep as uh, the Cascades were having a little trouble getting that ball out. And as they fight for possession here, Heat ball. Jimmy Steele is going to leave it. No, he's going to go back. He sends it to Marshall. And now Sam McDonald has a bit of room. Once again, Cascades intercept. Here's a nice pass, but it was too high up. Kale Manella went off the side of his chest. Otherwise, if that had been a few feet ahead of him, <laughs> he probably could have had the momentum to have a clean break. The unimaginable for the Heat. They don't want to think that way. <laughs> and 
there's an offside call. Felix Jones quickly plays it to Aiden Tuck. Jacob Bjork. There's Tegu Juma Bone. And that one taken away by Jaron Deeperengi. York chips it over. Ooh, missed play there by Sahib Sidhu. Yeah, Juba Bowen tried to take away the ball from Sidhu, but unfortunately just a little too much juice and goal kick it is. Zero zero here in the first half. From Nona Sports Field on Canada West TV, presented by Co-op. I'm Kirk Penton, joined by Oliver Posada, and here's a chance. Taylor Richardson, can he get past Sam McDonald? No, he can't. Great play by the graduate there. Is looks like there was a little too much physical contact there. Kill Manella. Getting a talking to from the official. And Nicholas Reitzma playing his final U Sports game. He's in med school, so he's in his sixth year of school here at UBCO thanks to the pandemic, but he probably still has more school to go after this. Mm -hmm. Indeed, med school, residency, uh, yeah. it is a journey to be a doctor or, for, or whatever field of medicine you pursue. Yeah, he, uh, he watched the first two seasons he played and then got the start in his third year and has started every game since, and he's become a leader on this team. It's not every day you hear a team say that their keeper is their leader, but he's kind of become that guy for this team over the years and even though they didn't make the playoffs two years ago they had a great start to the year and a tough finish and just missed out on the postseason and it's definitely a positive example to follow for the young upcoming players for the Heat you may have to sit out one or two seasons but making the moments count may very well determine your destiny Absolutely. as a soccer player yeah for sure Aiden Tuck sends it ahead and does it go too far? Yes, it does. Taylor Pichet tried to track that one down, but couldn't quite get there. David Parfait still has it on his foot. Trevor Zanata, the leading scorer for these Cascades. And we're going to see our first substitution of the match. Man Paul Brower enters. He's got some scoring talent. Parman Minhas comes off. Rangi sends it in. It's loose. And there's a drive that Reitzma has to just chip over the net, and that'll lead to a corner here for the Cascades. Now that the 
ball has been found. David Parfait sets it down. And there's a nice curling ball. But it's turned aside by the heat. Actually turned aside by the Cascades as that went off a white jersey and out. So it's heat ball. Rangi plays it back. Sadu sends it up. And there's a whistle. As Zanata and Aiden Tuck, who introduced themselves to one another several times last night, are <laughs> back at it again. I'm just hoping it doesn't accumulate to something more uh, cinematic. <laughs> Aiden Tuck, always in the middle of everything. Jacob York. Felix Jones. Can't connect. Montagliani there, and the ball is bouncing around. There's another collision. As Jones ran into Minella. Reddy plays it back. Tobias Spice plays it up for Rangi. Reddy. And that one just bounces over. Minella. But it went off blue. Minnell is going to throw it in. Or no. Yes, he is. Or is it on the ground? No, oh, no, he's throwing it. Sorry. <laughs> Can't see from all the people. And it looks like Sadu may have gotten his head on that one. But Reitzma was able to collect it. What you saw there was a little tactic by a goalie. Let the, let the uh, opposing team run all the way back so you have your defense open to pass the ball to. Is there about 23 minutes to go here in the opening half? Still 0 0. UBCO Heat trying to spoil the end of the regular season for the Fraser Valley Cascades here on Canada West TV, presented by Co op. Cascades win and they're in. Heat not going to the playoffs, but they can ruin it for Fraser Valley. And the Heat have definitely come to play tonight. Looks like they definitely do want to spoil it. Mm -hmm. The only question is, can they relay to the score sheet today? Yes, that is the question. Manella has it in the corner. Cuts back. Nice move. Sends it towards the net. But Reitzma, with one of the easier saves he's had to make during his career, which will come to an end this evening. Marshall, back to McDonald. Over to Felix Jones. Nice little touch pass there to Jacob York, but it got away from him. Good set up with the touch pass, just a little bit off the angle, which required York to go a little further than he would like to. Tuck battling with Reddy. And Sadu's content just to hammer that thing towards West Kelowna. <laughs> Shots on goal. Just technically one nothing according to the score sheet here. 
Not a lot of chances yet. That's sent in and it lands on top of the net. Fools a couple of fans, <laughs> thinking it may have found its way in. It's easy to mistake the bouncing of the net as a goal. <laughs> that happens to everybody at some point. Jackson Cox takes a look around. So goes as Riley Marshall goes down. And McDonald puts it back in play. Here's a chance now for the Heat. Jumabone cannot get there in front of Spice. Juba Bone seems to be in a, in a certain area for the setups, but he is having a little difficulty trapping the ball, and that's something that uh, I, I hope that they're able to rectify as the game goes on. Jimmy Steele comes in. There's not a lot of flow to this game now. It's kind of been bogged down by a bunch of whistles. And it'll be Cascade's ball here. And that one goes out of bounds. They're going to say it's UBC ball. Cascade's putting some pressure on here, trying to steal it in the offensive zone. That throwing can't get to steal, though. And the Cascades have control. There's Parfait. Nice defensive play there, though. McDonald hurting after that one. You can hear it from the commentating table. He's still down, but on one knee now, and they're going to blow that one down as they kick it out of bounds. And McDonald did deal with an ankle injury earlier in the year. It caused him to miss some time. You hope he doesn't uh, have to leave the game here in his final U Sports contest. No, he's saying that he's telling the trainer to get back. <laughs> he's not leaving. He just needs a couple seconds here. <laughs> you know, a gamer like him. Not going anywhere. No, no, indeed. A dedicated defender scored a goal on October 16th versus Victoria. The last thing he wants is to end his last season of the game on the bench. He walks it off. He's up. And the Cascades give the ball back to the Heat which is the courteous thing to do in this game, which I love. <laughs> Considering there are no face-offs. <laughs> like in hockey, that's what you got to do. Yep. Home side, looking for a call there. Here's a break now, the Cascades. Richardson. Nice save there by Reitzma. Looks like he's having a few words with some of the defensive players. As much as Reitzman is meant to save, the less saving he does, the better. And they were, I think, also talking to the official about maybe the collision that led to that ball coming back the other way. But it's going to be a corner. Nikhil Reddy, the former Heat player, delivers. It's curling, and it goes all the way through. And the Heat just clear it. 
Here's another one that went over everybody in the box. And the Heat dodge a bullet there. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. About 15 minutes to go here in the opening half on Canada West TV, presented by Co-op. And the Cascades will throw it in. It's bouncing, it's loose. And it went off of somebody there. And there's a Cascades player down by the post, but Trevor Zanata looks like he's okay. Looks like his foot was caught in the net there. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah, that's what was helping him out. <laughs> Something I'd keep an eye on for the uh, Heat is that Reitzma's right side is a little bit bare on that side of the net. Uh, that may be something that the Cascades may pick up on. Like literally bare, yeah. Like yeah. it's worn down. Here's Aiden Tuck now. Has some room. And that one bounces. <laughs> Jackson Couch was thinking, should I come out and play that one or should I let it bounce? And it uh, <laughs> looks like he made the right decision. Yes, he did. <laughs> Brar plays it up for Richardson. McDonald looking okay on that. Banged up right leg. Troy's going to throw it in. Piche heads it up. And now Jimmy Steele's going to try and make something happen. He sends it up. Jacob York could not get there before that ball took a nasty skip forward. <laughs> and they're going to say that's Fraser Valley ball. Rangi now. Heat gain control. Riley Marshall plays it up, but it's headed back. Shots on goal, 2-0 in favor of the Cascades. It was the Heat last night who had the shot advantage as they came out flying in the first half. But didn't quite have the same success in the second and could not find a tally against Cokes. And they are still looking for that first goal of the weekend here in their final match of the 2021 season. Yep, as you just said at this point, going for broke is the best way to go for the Heat. Yep. Nothing, nothing else they got to save it up for. <laughs> cool night, no wind here in Kelowna. No rain, no fog like last night. Played the monsoon in the second half. But it's a nice night. Dry pitch. Cool for the fans, but probably the perfect temperature for the players. And the Heat having trouble getting some quality chances here in the first half. Mm -hmm. Something I did notice in the corner kicks, for example, Kirk, is that you had a lot of the Cascade players outside of the main group, which is, means that they're playing from a defensive standpoint. They're anticipating attacks, and they are doing a good job of separating players, pressuring offense players, and keeping uh, balls away from Calx. Felix Jones plays it up. Goes out. It's going to be UBCO ball. So Jacob York quickly sends it in. Jimmy Steele, that pass was a bit hot. 
couldn't keep it on his foot. <laughs> Sam McDonald's just going to play it back for Reitzma. Maybe they'll try the other side. Reitzma sends it all the way up. And that one's going to go out of bounds as well. Mm, a little too high there. 11 minutes left. Opening half. 0-0 zero, zero the score. UBCO, Fraser Valley. Fraser Valley needs a win. It appears, based on what's happening today, <laughs> Thompson Rivers has moved ahead. And UBC is enjoying a comfortable lead on Victoria, which Fraser Valley does not want. And here is an opportunity for the visitors. Manila throws it in. It's headed. It's loose. A bicycle kick was attempted there by Richardson, but the net needed to be about three times as high yes, as yes, it is it <laughs> for that to have gone in. It would have been a nice field goal oh, right through the uprights. It's a thing of beauty when it, when it works. <laughs> And that was good to see an attempt anyway, right? <laughs> so yes, the standings have been updated here. Thompson Rivers in second place with 17 points. Fraser Valley can tie them with a victory. But Thompson Rivers still has another game, their last game tomorrow afternoon. In Prince George against the University of Northern British Columbia, whom they beat 3-0 today. And UBC also. Jumped out to a quick 3-0 lead, I heard, in the first 10 minutes. They're still up 3-0 on the Victoria Vikes in Victoria. So it looks like they are going to... Cruise to victory tonight, and that will bump them up in the standings ahead of Thompson Rivers again with 18 points. But, as I said, Thompson Rivers, this is UBC's last game tonight, so Thompson Rivers would have a chance to bat move back into second. And that would leave Fraser Valley and Trinity Western fighting for that last spot. And as I mentioned earlier, the Cascades would lose the tiebreaker with Trinity Western. So they, it's looking now like they have to win this game. A draw or a loss means they're going home with the heat. Nikhil ready. He does not kick it. Parfait does. Ooh, he's looking for Sidhu. The big center back moved up. Could not get his head on it. And the Heat will throw it in. Once again, the Heat just can't accept that throw in. Can't knock it down, trap it. And it goes out. Trapping has been a problem for the Heat this, uh, this game, Kirk. I'm noticing some good plays that are marred by the capturing of the ball. Spice was trying to play that over, but nobody was home. Troy was too far up the field, and Richardson doesn't like that call. This Pichet took a spill. And Aiden Tuck will perform the free kick. Sends it in. It's sent right back out. Jacob York's going to send it back. And a Juma Bone was offside there. And the Cascades are able to get out of that jam and focus on offense now. As Jimmy Steele boots that one towards the airport. As you mentioned earlier, Kirk, their playoff situation is showing as they have done a lot more offense than yesterday. And they are making those opportunities. They're shooting at the net. They're having corner kicks. 
The question is, can they pass Nicholas Reitzma today? Here comes Reddy against his former team. He chips it ahead for Richardson. Richardson sends it over, but Felix Jones is there to fire it away. And that is going to be UBCO ball. Not exactly sure what happened there. Does it look like Felix Jones booted it out? But perhaps it went off of a phase rally player. Richardson cannot track that one down. Jim Bowen trying to get there again, but he's been a little too far up the field <laughs> twice now. He's been very eager, and he's indeed a fast runner. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the refs are seeing this, and they're calling it as it is, offside. Sidhu <laughs> fires it up. And Ajumabone gets the call there. Sadu was on his back. Aiden Tuck once again. Sends it all the way over. For Riley Marshall, who has a little bit of room, which quickly disappears, and he turns it over. And there's another shove that's called. More physical game than last game. And that's saying something. Because <laughs> they were all over each other last night. Spice now, he's going to send a rocket. Trying to get to Manella, but it doesn't get there. Rangi plays it back. Sadu's just going to give it back to Cokes, who's going to launch it into the Okanagan night. McDonald there. And a couple of guys on him. Jacob York's trying to get it out, but he can't. And right back comes Parfait. Parfait sends one, but it misses the mark. Here late in the first half, still 0-0. Zero, zero. Between the Heat and the Cascades. I feel that as this game goes on forward, you're going to probably see Tom Lowndes substitute more attacking midfielders and forwards, given that the situation will become more dire. Absolutely. As long as UBC holds on for a win, and they're enjoying a 3 nothing lead over Victoria, it's win or go home for the Cascades. Reitzma's going to send it deep. Zanata off. A nice header up to Maynella, who had two players on him. <laughs> Rangi. And it's heat ball. Jimmy Steele. Giuliano Montagliani can't keep it. Tuck still has it though. He takes a spill, Manella. The guilty party. Another collision over there. It's ice packs are going to be uh, needed after this one. Riley Marshall now plays it up for Jimmy Steele. 
Salt Spring Island product. Been a starter the last two seasons. He's another midfielder, just like Tuck. <laughs> always on the move, always in the middle of the action. He's had a goal and an assist. Pardon me, one assist in 24 starts now. This is his 24th start in his last game. Jacob York got a little handsy there. With Char and Deeprangi. So they're going to have to get that ball and bring it back. Deeprangi got a little excited there, kicking the ball without the ref's approval. that nice kick into the box it's up and just over the crossbar what a chance as time expires Tobias Spice came up from his defensive position and just before the the whistle blows to end the half it was a great setter there, but unfortunately for the Spice, just a little bit over the bar there. But uh, they'll send a message to Reitzma that that's been evident. Uh, they are reaching the goal posts. Absolutely. Spice has the height, and uh, that was a great set play to end the half. But it remains 0-0 through 45 minutes. Cascades need a win. Heat trying to play. Spoiler will be back on Canada West TV, presented by Co-op for the second half in about 15 minutes. One more goal than the UBCO Heat in this second half, or they will be going home just like the UBCO Heat. It is that simple. They need to win this game to get into the playoffs. So what can we, is it just going to be all out offense now for Fraser Valley? Is that is that the plan, or what, what do you do now if you're... If you're the Cascades, I'm sure uh, Tom Round spend the the half time letting them know of the situation. <laughs> they do need to score. You're going to see a lot of offensive plays from Cascades, but also I'm sure Zanata told the Heat of the same situation. And what better way <laughs> to end the season than take out the team that took you out? That's right. Last night when uh, Fraser Valley won one nothing here in Kelowna, that ended the hopes of the Heat to get into the postseason. And now it could be a similar situation. Even a draw is not going to be enough for the Cascades, who are putting the pressure on here first. And it's going to be a free kick in a prime position for the Cascades here early going in the second half. So the... All defenders head towards the box. And there's been a couple substitutions here. We'll get to those after this free kick here. And it's former Heat player Nikhil Reddy. This could be his final university game if his team can't find a way to win. Here's the kick. It's up. And Nicholas Reitzma leaps up and makes the grab and launches it. That's a nice toss. Alex Sol, one of the substitutions, tried to track that one down. He couldn't get there, so Reese Farragher is in for Riley Marshall. Alex Sol takes over for Jacob York and Jacobo Sainz Ramos is in for Giuliano Montagliani. So, youth for youth, mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. there. <laughs> A bunch of first and second year players swapping spots. And there's a tackle. Surprise, surprise, Aiden Tuck in the middle of that confrontation. Shots on goal in the first half. 2-0 in favor of Fraser Valley, so UBCO still looking for that first shot on goal. They had the shot advantage last night and lost, and now 
they're playing a little better, I would say, maybe than last night, mm-hmm. but just haven't been able to get anything close to Jackson Cokes. Mm, I think as uh, as the game goes by, and if goals aren't being made, I can see the Heat taking on a more defensive posture to make sure that they uh, spoil Cascade's chances of progressing. Absolutely. A draw would do that. It's going to be another free kick here for Fraser Valley. David Perfett. Sends it towards the goal. It's headed. And there's a collision. Alex Sowell. Oh, they're saying it went the other way. Nikhil Reddy. And there was a glorious chance for the Cascades, but they could not find a way. No, no. I think you're already seeing the defensive approach to the Heat. And rightfully so. Wrightsma sends it down. Another player on the turf. Taylor Pichet. Pardon me, that's Malachi Emerson. And Aiden Tuck will serve up the free kick. He's going all the way. Sam McDonald got his head on it, gave it back to Felix Jones, but Felix Jones couldn't direct it towards the goal. And that one goes out of bounds, and it'll be Cascade's ball. Tarndy Brangy now has the ball. Almost picked off by Aiden Tuck. A little try, good attempt at interception, but it did bounce off to him on, onto the outside. Taylor Pichet got the yellow card on that earlier play. Free kick that almost resulted in the game's first goal. Pichet playing in his final game. He'll be graduating. Of the six players who are graduating off this roster, three of them are from Kelowna. Pichet is one of them. He started 27 games, including tonight, and has played... A lot of games, a lot more than everybody else who's graduating. He's playing in his 57th game of his career, which is a lot. He hasn't missed much time. He's had three assists in his career, ten shots on goal. For a defender, not bad, not bad. He's looking to go out a winner tonight here in his hometown before he moves on with his life. And here you're going to get a chance to alleviate some of this pressure. You're seeing a lot of fouls from the Cascades already in the second half. If I would advise them not to get too excited, even though they're getting trying to get that goal. Yeah, they're definitely uh, putting the hammer down. They know what they have to do. There's a nice header up. And there is the whistle. Did he hit it with his hand? Also, the frustration is becoming visible from the Cascade players, so composure will be very important if they want to see the playoffs. Yep. Man, Paul Breyer, he was racing away. Might have had a nice shot on goal there, but... The whistle blows. Alex Sowell trying to take it away from Spice. Tobias Spice wins that battle, gets it up, but Richardson can't control it. And even though they don't 
have the ability to get in the playoffs, I'm pretty sure the Heat are <laughs> they're definitely going toe for toe emotionally with the Cascades here. They definitely want it almost as bad, I'm sure, as Fraser Valley does. Brar trying to do some footwork. Played in. Brar ready. The ball is bouncing around. Manila plays it back. And Reitzman is able to snag that one. Mm -hmm. As you said earlier, there's quite a bit of incentives for the Heat today. Chanel for Reitzma going home with the Cascades, getting a win. The list goes on. Alex Sol has got a bit of room here. Takes it over the line. Ramos now sends it back to Ferger. And Ferger didn't like what he saw. So Reitzma launches one up. And as is often the case, that's a hard one to bring down and possess. But the Heat are going to get to throw it in here. Felix Jones sends one. Juma Bone could not track that one down. Rangi missed his mark. Back and forth we go. Pichet sends that one deep. Juma Bone trying to make something happen. Jimmy Steele quickly plays it in for Ramos. Up to a Juma Bone, but a Juma Bone couldn't get it. Sidhu sends it out. And it looks like that's going to be the first corner of the game for UBCO. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, hopefully this is a sign of good things to come for them. Jimmy Steele playing in his final game. Getting ready. A low driver. Never had a chance. Mm -hmm. And it's cleared. Tuck quickly sends it back in. A Juma Bone gets his foot on it. Tried to pass it back, but that one goes out, and it's another corner. Steele's going to leave that one for Aiden Tuck. He's going to try it from the other side of the flag. And he sends it up. And it's headed away by Brar. Some nice defense there from Richardson. He takes it away. And he races up the right side. Blows by Steele. Pichet, though, there to meet him. And down goes Richardson. And there's another collision as Brar sends Tuck rolling. These guys want it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that yeah. much is clear. Well, they, they need to. They've got less than 45 minutes to, to make something happen. We're in the second half here on Canada West TV, presented by Co-op. 0-0, zero, zero, Fraser Valley, UBCO. Cascades need a win, and they're in. Lose or draw, and they're going home just like the Heat are. Some pretty good drama here on the last day of the regular season for both of these teams. Parfait sends it in, and it's headed, and it's in! The Fraser Valley Cascades strike again. Tobias Spice. Spicy. Right place, right time. Beautiful shot into the crowd. Spice was there. Right well, couldn't do anything about that one. That was the goal they needed. 
in the Fraser Valley Cascades, just like they did last night. Score just after. That was directly off the corner. Mm -hmm. Last night it was a couple of seconds after the corner. But they are on the board, and now they just need to hold on. Mm -hmm. And they're going to the postseason. The team that did not like that goal was the Trinity Western Spartans, followed by the UBCO Heat. I think the Trinity Western Spartans hated that one more. Oh, probably. Probably. Somebody on that side is definitely watching this game. <laughs> oh, yeah. They need a tie if they... They need a tie in this game. If uh, it ends in a tie, the Trinity Western Spartans will get into the postseason. And we're going to see a substitution here. It's Malachi Emerson heads off. And Owen Spicker, another graduating player, comes on in his final game. Cascades not holding back, looking for that insurance marker. Seeing Spicker on the field now makes you wonder if uh, the, the change will be from defense to offense for the Heat, putting their lead score on. Absolutely, so that goal coming in the 58th minute. 30 minutes to go here, Fraser Valley up 1-0. By Spice from Germany. That's his second goal of the season. Parfait with a beautiful kick. And here they come again. Sadu collides with Tuck, and Tuck's a little slow to get up. Checks his head for any holes, any leakage. <laughs> no, he's all right. And Reitzma is going to hammer the ball down the pitch. Sails over everybody and out of bounds. And the substitutions continue. As Taylor Pichet is going to take a seat in his final game. And Hayden Johnson comes on. He's had some he's had some chances offensively this year. Has yet to find the score sheet, but the way he's played, he's uh, shown he has the ability. And there's a collision, and there's a Cascades player down. We thought Fraser Valley had the worst uniforms last night for announcers. It turns out they have an even worse pair, a worse set that they've brought out tonight, which makes it hardly, basically impossible to read the numbers. Maybe we'll get a designer on them in the off season. <laughs> get them some numbers that people can actually see. Brar's back up. He's okay, so it's going to be another free kick. And there's a drive. And that one doesn't hit anybody, but it goes off of a heat player, I think. Mm -hmm. The heat are being put on the back foot right now. Yeah, it's going to be another corner. And Parfait, who set up the first goal, is going to try and do it again. It's up, but it goes through the box all the way through, and Jimmy Steele is able to send it all the way up. Tasia Juma Bones trying to get there. Still going to be a throw in for the Heat. Keo 
Eddie takes it away. Some nice footwork. And that one goes high in the air. Who's going to come away with it? Aiden Tuck's not going to let it happen easily. For the Cascades, we're in position to lock up a playoff spot, knock the Trinity Western Spartans out of playoff position. Josh Bandall checks into the game. He got the start last night. He's going in. Take a Juma bone. We'll have a seat. And now the Heat will get a chance to tie it up on a corner as Aiden Tuck heads over. Fraser Valley up 1 0. Both hands up, both hands down. Here's the kick. And that one. Ends up being contested. And they're saying it is. Fraser Valley ball. There's another corner kick ends up going through everybody. Jimmy Steele plays it up. Bandall's going to be playing forward now. He was a starting defender last night. And here comes... Taylor Richardson. Scary quick for those heat defenders, Taylor Richardson is. But they're able to nip that one. Mm -hmm. you're, you're seeing some interesting offensive plays by the Cascades. At the very least, they want to keep giving the impression that they can reach the goal and keep Wrightsman and the defense on the back foot whilst also maintaining their defense because they know the heat are coming for them. Here come the heat. But that one sails through the box. Nobody home again. Bandall now. Plays it back, but too far. And Reese Ferger will give it over to Sam McDonald. Jimmy Steele with a nice play to take it away. Ramos tried to give it back to him, but the return pass was off the mark, and Ferger tried to head it forward, but it goes off the side of his head and out. And the Cascades with about 25 minutes to go here. In no rush to throw it in. No. <laughs> And you'll be seeing a lot more stalling from the Cascades as the clock dwindles. Those big defenders make it very tough for those passes to uh, advance past the back line mm -hmm. of the Cascades. The Cascade back line has been doing a solid job throughout this entire game. <laughs> Jimmy Steele's up and at him. Giving it all in his last game of his career. Gail Manella leans up against the fence before throwing it in. And 
knocked down by Ramos. He turns. Some nice work there, and there's a pass that... Tuck was waiting for, and it didn't get there on time, and then the person on him fell on him. <laughs> Tuck's been banged up. But he's been getting his nose dirty all game long. Another pass that can't find its mark. Farragher is going to play it up for Ramos. Steele sends it up for Sol. Sol trying to find a way through. He sends it over. Sol is going to go across, but that has way too much on it something that's noticeable with the heat is that there's a lot of bouncing balls and the trapping is not as good as it can be and in a game situation where you have less than a second to make a decision a bouncing ball is nothing is something you don't want yep. that is true they just haven't been able to really get a great opportunity still don't have a registered shot on goal technically don't even have a shot today Here's Richardson again. Sam McDonald comes up, says, not today. There's another ball over to Brar, but looks like offside was the call. Mm -hmm. Sam McDonald's blocks can be heard from the commentary table. No Hopefully kidding. His, uh, his legs make it through. <laughs> he has no fear there when he sticks that leg down with a player driving his leg on a shot. And he has no problem sticking it in the way. <laughs> Shots on goal. 3 nothing in favor of Fraser Valley, who's going to make a substitution here. Charity Brangi heads off. Jess Kern Sodi enters the match. First year defender. Jimmy Steele, nice, nice moves. Gets some applause from the crowd after that one, but his pass misses the mark. Farragher just heads it back to Reitzma. About 20 minutes to go here in the game. Heat down 1-0. Cascades win and they're in the playoffs. And here's another chance. Minella tried to get it across, but McDonald with a nice block. Spicker trying to chase that one down. It goes out of bounds. Aiden Johnson quickly throws it into Tuck. Tuck sends it across. Spice, the goal scorer, clears it. Ferger now over to Steele. Steele over to Ramos. Sol sends it over. Oh, great chance there, Ben Ball. It's great setup by Ramos. Ben Ball was in the right place, but the ball just didn't hit the right angle. Some nice passing there by the Heat, something we haven't really seen a lot of this weekend. But there's 20 minutes left in their season, and they're doing everything they can to spoil this party for the Cascades. Perfect. Harassed by Ramos. Goes down. No call. Perfect, still on the ground. Good sized crowd here. Very good crowd for a cool Saturday night. A few Fraser Valley supporters letting the official know that 
you know, that could have been a red card. Mm-hmm. Or pardon me, a yellow card. And they're having a discussion about it now. Choi, Parfait, Richardson. Could be a free kick nonetheless. And Parfait looks to be okay. Set up the first goal. There's another glorious chance. Mm-hmm. The Cascades are making the, the attempts. It's very clear that they are on the offense, and I'd be worried if I were the uh, Heat or the Heat defense and goalie right now. About 17 minutes to go. Can the Heat find an equalizer? Nice chip ahead by Sol to Ramos. Back to Sol. Sol plays it up for Bandal. Bandal can't get it through. Spice was there to spoil that party. Steel can't handle that one. And Parfait is away. There's a collision at the halfway line. And that one sneaks past Tuck. Tuck's going to have a few bruises on him tomorrow, yep. too. He's been in the middle of it all. Here's Spicker. He heads it back to Ramos. But that is broken up, and away come the Cascades. But Richardson can't get there. There's wide open Parfait. Felix Jones cuts him off. Barrar's got it, and he's taken down by Hayden Johnson. And is it going to be a kick? Looks like a penalty. Wrightsmith's having a chat. And uh, this could be it. This could be it to solidify the playoff trip for the Cascades. With about 15 minutes to go. It'll be Tobias Spice looking for his second goal of the game. And he drives it in. No problem whatsoever. And the Cascades are up 2-0. As the team comes down to celebrate basically the playoff clinching tally it is like almost a game of chance when you're a goalie and the penalty to shoot out Reitzman made his best effort but he went the other way that's two goals for Tobias Spice out of Nuremberg Germany three goals on the year now which ties him for the team lead with Trevor Zanata Man Paul Brar and Taylor Richardson Officially the goal coming in the 75th minute. And that means that time is running out on the heat here. We're in danger of not scoring a goal this weekend when they needed two victories. There will definitely be things to look at for Zanata and the Heat for the seasons to come. And they're losing six graduating players, fairly key players. Four of them started tonight. Although a lot of the rest of the players have basically been, most of them have been first-year players. Ramos takes a bit of a shove there. Even though the score now 2 nothing. Troy <laughs> gave Ramos a bit of a shove there. Anything to wear down the clock for the Cascades. Kelk sends it deep. Brar and McDonald collide there. 
Aiden Johnson trying to make up for that takedown in the box that led to the penalty kick that made it 2-0. That game in Victoria is now 4 nothing UBC. So it is official that UFV needed to win this game. Because <laughs> I don't think the bikes are coming back from that one. Mm -hmm. And there will still be more to decide tomorrow as Thompson Rivers will play UNBC to finish off their season. goes up to second with that win tonight but Thompson Rivers will have a chance to move back into second again with a win tomorrow and Reisma the leader of the team having a discussion with the official Wanting the foul call. Frustration setting in for the home side. Yes, yes and rightfully so with a 2-0 deficit. <laughs> Choi launches one up. Donald just heads it out. It's going to be Choi <laughs> taking their time deciding he's going to throw it in. <laughs> Savvy move. And Reitzma quickly plays it up. Felix Jones, big boot down the pitch. Soul's got it. Can't control it again. Oliver, you pointed that out many times astutely. The trapping has not been good for the home side. Taylor Richardson with a head of steam plays it over to Brar. Brar doesn't have anywhere to go, so he goes back. Minella drives one. Reitzma makes a nice save. Mm -hmm. Trapping has not been uh, the best example for the Heat today. As we are now under 10 minutes to go here in the second half. Fraser Valley 2, UBC 0. And the Cascades are threatening again. A loose ball, looking for Taylor Richardson, but the Heat were there to break it up. And that one goes off of Kelks' foot, right up in the air. Here's a chance now for the Heat. Ramos still has it on his foot, nice footwork. Another player that Dante Zanotto will be looking to in the years ahead. Spicker trying to make something happen. Can't get there. It's cleared. UBCO will have a throw in. Hayden Johnson now. Just going to throw it into the box. Jimmy Steele's got it. He lets it rip. It's loose. Spicker scores! His third goal of the season. He quickly grabs the ball and heads back. Excellent example of crashing the net. He got the rebound for off of Cox and did not waste it. And now the game's got a little more exciting. <laughs> exactly. The Cascades cannot afford a tie here. There's seven minutes to go. That That goal coming in the 83rd minute. 
2-1 now. Fraser Valley, though, not sitting back. They're looking to add an insurance marker again here. And here come the Heat trying to spoil the party. The Cascades cannot afford a tie. Soul over to Ramos, back to Steele. And so that was a pair of graduating players teaming up on that goal as Steele drove it in. Spicker with his team leading third of the season, put it away. Soul now off the defender, off of Troy. So it's going to be a corner for UBCO. Can they tie it up? Aiden Tuck quickly sends it in. Soul sends it. It's <laughs> cleared, but Tuck's going to come underneath it. Makes a move. Tries to send it in. Nice defensive play there by Richardson. And Hayden Johnson will throw it in. Johnson for McDonald off his head. Tuck sends it back to Soul. Soul's just going to drive it. There's McDonald got his head on it. I believe that might have been Steele who got his head on it. No, maybe Felix Jones. He was the one who put his hands to his head there. Somebody got their head on it. Mm -hmm. You're definitely seeing a different uh, energy now with the heat. Yes. Less than six minutes. Throwing everything but the kitchen sink at them. So Taylor Richardson heads out as the Cascades are trying to not give up any more goals. Even Dolly Wall in the game. There's about five minutes to go here. Jackson Cox. In no hurry. <laughs> Crowd yelling for him to kick it. And will the Heat be able to tie it up here late and spoil the party for Fraser Valley? You know the Trinity Western Spartans are cheering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're definitely watching with, with Glee right now. <laughs> Reitzma plays it up. Come on, boys! Trinity Western's hoping for a finish like they had against UBC last weekend where tons of goals were scored in the last few minutes. It was quite the game. So it can be done, and the Heat are going to get another opportunity here. As the Cascades are uh, on their heels. Hayden Johnson readies. He's able to throw it pretty far into the box, so he's probably going to do that again. He does just that. Ferger sends it back to Steele. Steele pauses, gives it back to Ferger. Ferger launches that one towards Penticton. Another ball that was just a little too high on the foot. Mm -hmm. Jimmy still tried his best to give it to Farragher, but Farragher unfortunately did not get, uh, got a little too much excitement in that shot. Okay, Rap, come on! Time wasting! Bullshit! Pardon, uh, to all you fans at home, <laughs> is Nikhil Reddy, the former Heat player. Tied his shoes about as quickly as my 10 year old there. <laughs> Which takes forever, by the way. Jackson Cokes. Headed back by McDonald. You know, Sam McDonald is not caring about defense right now. He's going up. Reisma, the drop kick. Soul is able to track it down here in the final few minutes. And the fighting is getting intense out there. And Soul is whistled, and it'll be a free kick for the visitors. The crowd is not liking that call at all. <laughs> the crowd's into this one. 
This game doesn't mean anything to the home side, but there's quite a few fans here rooting them on. And Spice, who's got both goals for the Cascades tonight, sends it in. And it's going to be UBCO ball. All hands on deck. Everybody's going forward. Reitzma. He's going to launch this one. About a minute left, and before even the ball gets there, the players are heading down. And Sam McDonald gets the yellow as Trevor Zanata, who's been uh, on the receiving end of a few physical confrontations this weekend, including yesterday's game, gets up slowly. We're approaching the end of regulation here. Heat trying to tie it up, spoil the party. Cascades trying to hang on to their 2-1 edge and lock up a playoff berth. Once again, somebody was going to throw it in, and they thought maybe we should just have someone else do it. <laughs> As the ball's bouncing around over there in front of the benches. Jimmy Steele. Down the left side looking for Hayden Johnson. Headed away by Zanata. This might be the last gasp here for the Heat. As Hayden Johnson once again throws it far into the box. It's headed away. Right back to him. He sends it back. Headed out of harm's way. Jimmy Steele sends it back. McDonald, that was Ramos, pardon me, but they're going to call that offside. Soul runs up to quickly give them the ball. As we are likely in stoppage time now. Fraser Valley. What did you say last night about minutes and seconds and seconds and minutes? <laughs> to the winning team, less seconds uh, seems like minutes. To the losing team, minutes seems like seconds. That's right. <laughs> And here's going to be a corner for the Cascades. And nobody's going to come in as Brar's taking his sweet time over there. Cascades happy just to kill as much time as possible here. They'll kick it in and play in the corner. Can't exactly see what's happening down there, but now it comes out. And this will, unless the Heat can get something here in the next minute. Parfait happy just to send that one back down. But it's given to the Cascades. The women's team still here cheering on their men <laughs> from Fraser, Fraser Valley. They're off to the playoffs as well. And their Cascades content just to take it into the corner once again. Here in stoppage time, Fraser Valley up 2-1. Last game of the regular season for both teams. If Fraser Valley holds on, they are off to the playoffs. Their spot would not be determined tonight. But they will sleep well tonight knowing that they are getting a chance to make it to the national championship and win that national championship, which is always the goal. Mm -hmm. They'll be one of the dancers. You can hear the Fraser Valley players asking the official how much time is left. And there can't be too much. 
The official checks his watch, but no whistle yet. Fager. Back to Reitzma. Reitzma sends it up for a little drama, but Cox it's a little too far, and Cox grabs it. Falls on it. Spicker trying to get in the way. And that'll do it. The Fraser Valley Cascade.